Welcome to your video on scatter plots and lines of best fit. We're going to start by going over some vocabulary. There are basically three things that you need to be familiar with. The first is what a scatter plot is. A scatter plot represents data using ordered pairs. So you're going to be graphing points. The important thing to remember when you're graphing the points is always to choose an appropriate scale for both the x and the y axis. So if your data is going from 0 to 100, don't choose a scale from 0 to 500. Make sure that your data fits nicely on the graph. Also, if it goes from 0 to 100, don't go by 1. Choose a scale that is more appropriate, such as 5s or 10s. Along with an appropriate scale, make sure that you label those axes with whatever quantities you are representing. And then after you choose um, an appropriate scale and look at your ordered pairs, you will plot the ordered pairs. And what you're going to notice is that you'll have ordered pairs all around the graph. They're not necessarily going to form a line or a curve, but they will just be scattered. And so we call that a scatter plot. Once you've drawn a scatter plot, you will create something called the line of best fit. We call this the line that best describes the data. And you may wonder, well, how do I know if my line is going to describe the data well? And so there's a couple of tips that we'll give you to help you determine if your line is a good line. The one thing we like to show is that there are approximately the same number of data points above and below the line. So you wouldn't want your line of best fit to have 10 points above it and only 3 points below it. You'd want to make sure that it kind of splits your data evenly. Secondly, you want to make sure that the points are evenly spaced around the line. So you don't want it to be hugging some of the points really close while others are far away. And lastly, the line does not have to go through any of the points from your scatter plot. It can, it can, but it doesn't have to. So don't think that you're actually trying to connect the dots in any way. You're just trying to draw a line that describes that data. And so with this, not everyone will have the same answer because what I think looks like the line that best describes it may be slightly different from the line that you pick. But we should all have values that are pretty close. Lastly, after you've made your scatter plot and drawn in your line of best fit, we're going to look at something called correlation. Correlation is something that describes the relationship between X and Y. So if you were looking at candle height over time, if you were to light a candle, the candle would obviously decrease in height because the wax would burn and melt. And so that would have a negative correlation because the height of the candle would go down as time increases. Um, if you were looking at the height of a person versus age, you would look at the older you get, the taller you get. Um, obviously, if you were looking from birth to, say, like 16, that would have a positive correlation. And so your scatter plot would just be points that were going in an upward direction. But then you can look at relationships that actually don't have a relationship. So if I were to look at um, the height of a candle versus the age of a person, well, that doesn't make sense at all. I mean, I'm pretty old and I might have a really short candle, whereas, you know, you're younger and maybe you have a really tall candle. There's really no connection there. So um, that would just be, you just have these random points all over the graph and there seems to be no pattern with them. So that would be no correlation. We have some examples here. Um, the first is we want to determine if X and Y suggest a linear relationship. Um, what that means is, could you come up with a line that describes that data? And if you can, then that becomes linear. Secondly, we're going to describe the correlation. And what that means is we're going to say, is it positive? So is it going upward? Is it negative? Going downward? Or is it just kind of all scattered and indicating no correlation? So with this first one, I think you can all agree that the points definitely seem to be going in an upward direction. And I would say that it's pretty strong positive. I mean, the points are clustered pretty closely together. We can clearly see that it's increasing. So um, it would have a strong positive correlation. You could also just say a positive correlation. Looking at the second graph, the scale is the same as the first, but you can see that my points are all over the place. And they don't really seem to be going up or down. They're just kind of just out there, and so this particular graph would have no correlation. And then in part C, you can see that the points in general are decreasing. 
but it's not as nice as in the first graph where they were increasing. I mean, in the first graph, you could clearly see that they were clustered together. Um, but in this, this third graph, I mean, they're going down, but it's not super tight. So we would say this is negative correlation, but we would probably call it weak negative, just because they wouldn't be hugging that line of best fit uh, very closely. All right, in our last example, now we're actually going to be looking at a scatter plot and just talk about how you would draw the line of best fit. So the graph below is showing how a person's weight might change depending on how much he or she runs during the week. And you'll notice that the weight is in kilograms, not pounds. Um, and then we've recorded, you know, for different weights versus how much you run, you know, we've plotted those points and tried to show that relationship. And so if we were going to draw a line of best fit, we want to talk about which of the lines that are drawn below would be a good line of best fit. So don't write anything just yet, but just kind of watch and listen for a moment. So obviously one line has a negative slope and one has a positive slope. So let's choose the positive slope. And you kind of put it up there and you'd say, all right, well, there are about the same number of data points above my line and below my line. Um, it kind of describes the data. I mean, the points are evenly spaced. But ask yourself if this makes sense. I mean, do the points look like they're going up or do they look like they're going down? And if you can't really tell, think about the scenario. If you're going to run more, does that mean you're going to weigh more? Because that's what a positive slope would mean. And I think we can all agree that if you're, you're running more, you are burning more calories, and so then your weight should actually go down. So I don't think this positive slope um, would be a good line of best fit. So let's go ahead and move this negative one in. And we're again looking at the data here. Um, it does seem to be going down. We're trying to space it so that there's about the same number of data points on each side. Um, so that looks pretty good. They, they look evenly spaced. There's about the same. But what may be bothering you is that one order pair way up in the corner. Um, yeah, it's about 90 pounds and 7 miles a week. Or I'm sorry, 90 kilograms and then 7 kilometers per week. And when you have one data point that's just kind of out there, um, sometimes we just ignore that one and we say, well, that's an outlier. You know, there's always like that one special case that doesn't really fit the rest of the data. And actually, if you ignore that one point, I think it becomes much easier to tell that this is definitely a negative correlation. And so um, we will call it negative. If you wanted to use an adjective with the negative, you could also say it would be a weak negative, but we'll just go with negative. That's sufficient. And then what we want to do is actually talk about what that means. Um, so obviously you can see it has a negative slope, but then here comes the explaining piece of it. And so the explaining piece is the more a person runs, the less the person weighs. And I think that's the takeaway from this video, is that we want to make sure that you're understanding what we're doing, because all of our scatter plots are going to be real life situations. We're not just going to be looking at random numbers and checking for a relationship, we're actually going to be looking at real quantities. And so, you know, think about that. The more you um, run, the less you're going to weigh. So that should make sense. You are now ready to move on to the next topic.